Welcome to the shop. So today I got a question from somebody asking about how I get my batteries to a storage charge. And that got me thinking about different kind of content that I could have for the channel. So I decided to do kind of a battery 101. And what that is gonna entail is first, we're gonna talk about charging from a beginner's perspective. What's important to understand when you charge batteries, you know, as far as how fast you charge them. It doesn't matter whether you have this charger or any other charger, just some basic things that I do while I'm charging to make sure my batteries are charging well, they're healthy, and I'm not gonna burn down my house. Second, I'm gonna talk about the tools I use to monitor the health of my batteries, just these battery checkers, and just a couple tips that I think are important to understand. Then we're gonna talk about flying with these batteries. Um, these batteries, obviously, this is our gas tank. And to know how much gas we have in the tank is super important. Yes, you could have a timer, but there are times where you might want to fly a little longer. You've been doing touch and goes. You're not burning up much battery. Instead of flying five minutes, you might be able to fly seven. And so I'll show you and talk about some of the tools I use to get me there. After I fly, often I check my batteries and I look for certain things about that battery. Is that battery performing well? Is it failing? Because the last thing you want to do is have a battery that's going to fail on a flight because you're going to lose your plane. And then last but not least, we're going to talk about getting your battery to a storage charge. How do we do that? There's a couple different ways of doing that. So hope you uh, like this kind of content. If you do, please hit that like button. Helps me out. Makes me feel good about doing these videos. And frankly, it helps my ego. So really, really, seriously you should hit that like button. I appreciate it. All right, stick around. We're going to start going through this stuff. Okay, let's talk about charging. So I like these ISDT K2s. I have two of them. So I can charge up all my, you know, at least four batteries in about 30 minutes or so typically is what I'm going to do. So the way I do it, let me just walk you through real quick a couple things. You know, one is I'm going to plug this in and this is this charger already senses the voltage, how many cells, and what those cells look like. So 11.6 volts or so. I'm gonna go into the charge mode and it basically, one of the things that's very important is how fast you charge this, your current. And I'm gonna select 2.5. And let me kind of go through what's going on here. I just hit start, it's gonna start charging and it's gonna charge basically, you know, pushing current into this, two, you know, this 2200 at a 2.5 amp rate. All these batteries, like this 2200 here, 1300 here, they have a desirable charge rate, current. Here's a 6000, has a specific charge rate. A lot of times you might hear the term, I charge at a 1C. And a 1C would be a 6000 milliamp battery, you would charge at six amps. A 2200, you could charge at 2.2 amps. And a 1300, you probably guessed it, 1.3 amps. You can deviate a little bit of that. Okay, this one, I have it automatically set up for, you know, at least not automatic, but set up for 2.5 amps. So it would charge normally at 2.2, I'm at 2.5, not a big deal. It, I'm not pushing it. I know some people that will double that. They'll do five amps on one of these batteries, these 2200s. I don't do that. I think it's hard on the batteries, creates an issue if the battery's failing, so on and so forth. So I'm pretty gentle with my batteries. Battery chargers, you can spend a lot of money on chargers. A good charger is a safety feature. If certain things don't look right, this system will tell you and it'll stop. So just FYI out there when it comes to charging, so charge at a proper rate that's basically good for this battery. It's 2200, 2.2, .2, and I also feel it when it's charging. I take a look at that. Is it getting hot? The other thing on this I can do is to see individual cells, how these individual cells are reacting to the charge. So I can see they're all pretty similar, which is what you want. The other thing I look at often is the internal resistance. And if the internal resistance is way high, you know, like double digits, here's 4.8 all around the board, this, this battery is pretty happy. Everything's similar. The rate with the cells are taking the load is similar. That's a good thing. If one of these was way out of whack or the numbers are really high, there's a concern. Let me say something, really small batteries, little, you know, 350 milliamp, 
2S batteries, the internal resistance on those usually is a lot higher. Now, a 350 milliamp battery, I'm charging at 1.3 or 1.4, but it's still, it's, it, I just found the smaller batteries, the numbers look a little crazy <laughs> as far as on the internal resistance, and they don't take the load as well. But just something to think about when you're charging, a couple things to think about, you know, as far as how you're setting it up and monitoring while you're charging. Battery checkers, or as I mentioned, ways to monitor the battery. It is super important to understand what's going on with this battery. And so I've got three different modules or systems here. This one's my favorite. I did a video on this. Um, hopefully you can see some of this without the glare of the lights and all. But, but anyway, um, this right here gives me all the information I need typically as far as when I'm looking at a pack to see the health of that pack. And this pack is pretty healthy. All the cells are pretty similar. Uh, one's a little less, but it's not too far out of whack. This has an ability to also balance this battery if I so wanted, but my charger also does that. These two, pretty similar. This has some other features in it. This one is a nice, simple, cheap $6 system that when you plug it in, it'll give you the same kind of information, but it cycles through. It's not gonna give you a lot of info but it's handy for while I'm flying. Speaking of which, while I'm flying, I want to know the voltage of my batteries while I'm flying, right? It's our gas tank. There's a couple systems that I use. Um, one is this guy right here. This little system right here is a poor man's telemetry, battery telemetry. I can set this. So if the battery gets below, let's say, 3.6 volts per cell, the lowest cell, this alarm is going to go off and it's very loud. I did a video on this little guy right here. This is the Predator version. And so as I'm flying, if my battery gets low, if I punch full throttle and all of a sudden it starts beeping, when I let off throttle and let the battery recover for a little bit, a couple seconds, as far as cruising at a slower speed, it usually will recover, it'll stop beeping. This is a great tool easily to transfer to plane to plane. If you don't have fancy telemetry on your plane, this tells you what the voltage of your battery is while you're flying. That's pretty critical. <clears throat> this system is for FR Sky. This is the FR Sky sensor, tells you the battery voltage per cell. This will connect to your receiver and you can get the fancy press a button. It'll tell you the lowest cell, which is super critical. I don't have a good example of this other than the Spectrum Smart Avian ESCs have that same kind of smarts, right? Now on this plane here, if it was plugged in and I have it set up, I got a video on this as well. Flight pack, no data. If it was plugged into a plane or if my Cirrus was, was sitting behind me, um, which would have been really great, then it would have told me the voltage of that battery pack. So having that as I'm flying, knowing how much gas I have in the gas tank is super critical for me. And these are some easy things that you can implement depending on the system you have. And I've done a bunch of videos on getting that telemetry. I'll put those in the description. All right, when I'm done flying, um, obviously I'll have, you know, on certain planes, I'll have telemetry that'll show me how many volts I have, but it doesn't give me all the details. I like this system here because after I fly, I can take a look at all of those cells and I could look to see if one of the cells is really not performing as well as another. You know, here you see cell number four is a little less than all the others. It's not in a range that really concerns me. If all these were at 3.9 and that cell was at 3.7, that would be a big concern. Okay, that would mean that, yeah, that this battery is causing some issues and I probably will put it on the no-fly list. So something I do after I fly to just check the health of my batteries. Right, let's talk storage charge. So I have a couple different ways of doing this. I can either discharge on my charger, and most good chargers will have that option. Okay, So if I go through the system, and I'm going to come up here to task, select storage charge, and it's set up to just start discharging this particular battery, and it's going to bring it down to that proper voltage of around 3.8 3.85 volts per cell. Okay, So this system will do it. It'll also balance as it's doing it. If one cell is not cooperating like the others, you know, it will continue to play around until it does a balanced storage charge. 
I'm going to stop that because it's loud. The other way I go about doing it is with this system. And what this system allows me to do is turn it on. And I did a video on this whole system. Set up how many cells, how much, how fast or discharge rate, let's say five amps. And I just let it sit there and it just goes. And with this system, it's just super handy because I can discharge batteries from the field that I didn't fly because of weather or whatever reason. And I can get those discharged down in minutes versus this thing. This thing's going to take a long time. It's going to take an hour or so to discharge batteries, especially when you got a big old 6,000 milliamp battery you have to discharge. One of these things is fantastic. I'm going to turn that off because that's going to be loud. The other thing you can do, and I know people have done it, where they have made systems where it's discharging from like a light. It illuminates a light and it's sucking battery. When those are in play, you do need some kind of system that'll give you an alarm, like this guy here. If you plug that in, you set the alarm for 3.8. Once it gets down to that 3.8 level, this thing will start chirping and let you know where you are as far as yet that it's, it's now at a storage charge. One other thing with all of this, pay attention to your batteries as they're charging. Pay attention to them when you're, if you're putting them to storage charge. These batteries need to be stored safely. Um, when it comes to discharge, storage charge, I don't let my batteries go for more than a day or so. Um, and then I'll, if they're sitting in my bag and I didn't fly them, a lot of times when I come home from flying, I will put them on the discharger and get them to that storage charge automatic. Just It's just part of my process. I don't let them sit around at a full charge for very long at all. So I hope this helps. If uh, you have a question, leave a comment. If you like these kind of videos, again, hit that like button. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.